Alright, what's going on guys, Luca here, the Arcanist class got finally released on PTS, but keep in mind this is PTS week 1, actually even PTS day 1, they will probably change some stuff around, so this will be only my first impressions about the class, how the gameplay feels like, the rotation, that kind of stuff. It's definitely not the end result, it's just the beginning of a long test phase, but I wanted to show you at least a harsh direction in terms of rotation skills, animation and mechanics. Let's start with the first Arcana skill called Rithing Rune Blades. Craft a series of upper crystal runes before launching them at the foe, dealing magic damage three times and generating Crux. Crux is a new mechanic on an Arcanist which empowers skills like damage increase, damage mitigation, healing, that kind of stuff. In this case it empowers our second skill, Tentacular Dread. The hentai skill, infuse your arms with abyssal magic to form tentacles that lash out, dealing frost damage and consuming all active crux. You can have a maximum of 3 crux by the way. This skill marks the enemy with a new debuff called abyssal ink, which increases the damage done on this enemy by 5% plus another 2% each crux, with 3 crux another 6%, so in total 11% extra damage done. Insane. Not sure if this debuff also counts for a group member though, need to test it first. Next Arcana skill is Fulminating Rune, a ground AoE dot ability. Summon an explosive rune under an enemy that etches foes nearby with scrawled glyphs, dealing magic damage over 20 seconds. The rune lingers on the initial target for 6 seconds before detonating and dealing another frost damage to enemies within 7 meters. And up to 3 allies near the initial target can activate the rune break synergy, so another extra damage synergy for your group mates, which deals frost damage in a 7 meter radius. Very nice. Next up is a buff which deals passively damage every 3 seconds, called Inspired Scholarship, adds a series of runes onto your weapon that pulls with power once every 3 seconds. Each pulls enhances your class abilities and strike an enemy with one deals additional magic damage and generates crux if you have none. While slotted on either ability bar, so it doesn't matter if you have it on the front or back bar, gain major brutality and major sorcery, increase your weapon spell damage by 20%. Really nice, especially for PvP, to have a class ability which provides the major weapon and spell damage buff just slotted. Really nice. Last Arcana skill is an ultimate called the Tide King's Gaze, this being cast forth a beam that rends a student reality for 8 seconds that deals magic damage to a 3 meter radius every 0.5 seconds. And the beam even follows the initial target and hunts for a new one within 8 meters. Looks pretty cool and deals a good amount of damage. Combined with the usual stamina skills, Daddy Cloak on the front bar as powerful AE dot, with Stampede and Calf on the back bar, and as filler dots, Degeneration and Rending Slashes. Did some tests with the Arcanist Beam Pragmatic Fate Carver. This skill here had pretty much the same results without raining slashes, but a 4.5 second channel ability fits probably terrible in extra content. That's why I prefer just Room Blades as spammable. Build wise, nothing special. With Renekin on the front bar, Pillar on the back bar, Zahn as monster set, and one killed for extra crit damage and crit rate. Did some tests with the new Mythic Neck, which gives almost 5k penetration, 15% extra damage against NPCs, 15% extra crit damage, but your light and heavy attacks are basically gone with 99% damage reduction. Kinda useless on the dummy, but for raid content, especially in trash, probably best in slot, and also probably in PvP, the crit damage and the 5k pen definitely worth the use. Traits for Divines, full max stamina glyphs, full bloodthirsty on the jury with weapon damage and the stamina recovery morph, front bar 2 daggers, non charge, flame poison, and back bar a great sword in infused with the berserker glyph. Pretty standard setup. Let's take a quick look on the passive skills, on the damage passive skills. First one is called Fated Fortune, which gives us 12% extra crit damage and crit healing when you gain or spend Crux. I had around 50 to 60% uptime with this build. Second one, Harnessed Quint Essence, which gives us weapon and spell damage, 5% for 10 seconds, 
when we restore Magicka or Stamina, which is super easy with our spammable Within Rune Blades, which procs the passive Hydra's Clarity. When you generate Crux, which we do with our spammable, you restore 225 Magicka or Stamina. With this passive here and with Rune Blades, we have a 100% uptime on Harnessed Quintessence. Next passive gives us 15% increased damage deal with status effects. And the last one is insane, gives us 1k, almost 1k penetration for each Herald of the Tome mobility slotted. In this case, uh, 3k on the back bar and 2k on the front bar. The first skill tree is more the damage tree, the second one more the survivability tree with armor, damage mitigation, that kind of stuff. And the third one is more a healing tree. Second tree, Soldier of Upper Kufa. First passive gives us almost 2k armor, while a Soldier Upper Kufa ability is active for you, which we don't have on this build, so this is more useful in PvP. Second one gives Magic and Stamina region, same stuff, you need to slot the ability. Third one, casting an Arcanist ability warps the weave of fate around you, granting you and your group members minor evasion for 20 seconds, so 10% AoE damage reduction and this effect can occur once every 5 seconds, basically permanently up. Last one gives us extra ulti regen when you consume Crux for ultimate every 8 seconds. Last tree, the healing tree, creative rune forms. First one increase our healing done by 3% for each active Crux. Second one, when you generate Crux, you restore 125 Magicka Stamina. Like I said, we need this passive here to proc Harness Quintessence for the 5% extra weapon and spell damage. Third one, your excessive scholarship increase your Magicka and Stamina recovery just flat by 18%. And the last one, reduce the cost of damage shield and increases the strength of your damage shield. As Mundus the Thief, for extra crit rate, Nava Food Soup definitely needed for sustain. 64 points in Stamina. I'm Dumber by the way, with the normal weapon power potions, CPs, blue ones, steady aim, mastered arms, of strikes and exploiter, red ones, rejuvenation, fortified bonds, fatality and celerity, nothing special. Time for the pass, did some tests with different setups, but PTS is back at the moment, some armor passives, class passives, CPs and even some alchemy passives are not working properly, but I still want to show you at least the rotation. Seen some paths around 117k, that was the highest I think. I managed to get 113k with this build after a couple of passes. I will wait at least one or two weeks until they fixed all the stuff and then I will start passing again. For now, just use it as a rotation purpose. Talking about the rotation, super simple, a classic dot with spam rotation. Keep up every dot, don't let the calf stacks expire and use room blades as spam in between. I will link you to written rotation and the build in the description below. Should be easy to follow. If you have questions about the class, type them in the comments below or add me on Discord. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for more Arcanist footage and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.